Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy Nistro here and I want to give you guys a replay analysis of a few games I played on YGO Omega Online. So we're back with Budget Rescue Ace um, because I want to continue playing with this deck. I want to see if the budget variant is still worth playing and I can tell you that from experience that this deck is still very good but there are some caveats with the budget version first off is that you're going to brick more right there's less engine in your deck compared to the simple spoils or uh version right especially now that uh airlifters at one even when airlifter was at three it was still really easy to brick so we ought to play as much engine as possible the only caveat to that is to randall we will rarely get a second normal summon or we, we will rarely get a body on field before using our normal summon. So half the time we're using our normal summon, meaning Durandal isn't as viable in this deck. It's still an option and so a small world, but uh, I, I want to keep it. I want to keep my options more realistic. So we're still at mostly for, for engine. It's still mostly the same as the deck profile. It's only in terms of non engine that I started to switch things up. First off is I took out the Book of Moons because um, we're in a format where there's more hand traps than just imperm, right? We still lose to Ash on our first starter. We still lose to anything on our first starter. So Book of Moon is way less important. As a matter of fact, it's the most cuttable card in the entire deck. Um, it did save me in one match though. So we'll, we'll get to that when we come to it. And this is what I've started playing in not just my IRL simple spoils build, but I think in the budget build, this works as well. Crossout is just amazing as a card and it does so much and it carries so much um, because it can stop just about any significant hand trap from your deck right it can stop a nib it can stop droll it can stop ash it can stop imperm and we have the one veiler just in case people are still on this card i don't think they're they're going to be on veiler this format because cashdera is doing pretty well so any shifter dot deck like you kind of get punished for playing veiler over imperm so we're, we're kind of just trying to find a uh, middle ground here. Crossout also is good against dealing against board breakers, right? If you want to stop evenly, if you want to stop Harpy's Fetter, Lightning Storm, you could, yeah, you could side out one of these crossouts and put in a Lightning Storm here. You could also side out the Tactics. I never really use Tactics much. So yeah, Crossout is sort of like a good best of both worlds kind of card. You just have to like really be careful with your siding patterns when you're always understand you may not be able to fully take out Nibiru's, like maybe take out two of them. Put in two cars inside you just have to throw in a beer for for the crossouts and crossouts like really cool because it's kind of like the double benefit where you play more hand traps because you have to call more cards with crossout to like stop your opponent from playing them and because you're playing more hand traps you may draw into those hand traps those significant hand traps that stop your opponent which is what happened to me a lot with like droll this past weekend at the regional that i went to was like really good in like when I drew it and it was really good when I cross out it too, right? So it was like, it, it was the benefit of being able to play cross out and, a, and like one of the strongest cards of the format in the same list that allowed me to like punish my opponent but not get punished as often. So it, it's, it's a really good card I think right now. And I think uh, more people might want to try this deck. In the TCG right now, I think Fire Engine is not that good. I would much rather you guys summon Fire Attacker. And the reason why I say that is because Fire Engine rewards my opponent for getting removal on turn one, or for playing removal on turn one. So if they make an SP turn one, Fire Engine gets banished. If they have Fenrir turn one, Fire Engine gets banished, or even the Airlifter gets banished face down. Um, there is a lot that your opponent can do, like Unchained, again, we never summon this against Unchained. They can super poly you, make a Mud Dragon, and now their board is harder to break on top of your board being less effective. So I often side Fire Engine out in my regionals this past weekend. I just straight up took it, took out Fire Engine and played Fire Attacker over it, and I was not, I did not miss Fire Engine at all. It wasn't even in my side deck. I never went, I never said to myself, man, I really wish I was playing Fire Engine in this moment. So I think taking out Fire Engine for Fire Attacker might be the play. Reinforce is good for helping you play around board wipes. So like uh, evenly Lightning Storm, Harpy's Fighter Duster. It's really good at dealing with those cards because it just gives you one extra card that like will build your board back, right? So uh, when they call battle phase, right? Like let's say it's an evenly, when they call battle phase, you immediately activate the reinforce. Emergency, you can, I guess you can save the emergency unless you're summoning something like airlifter where it's like, okay, I just want to summon it to get the search. But emergency could be saved for like uh, when they actually resolve the card, right? So you can emergency 
summon preventer tribute preventer so that once the chain resolves and evenly has already done his thing then preventer can trigger summoning back a banished rescue ace so emergency is good at playing around uh evenly and so is reinforce it's just it's just hard to make the traps flexible around evenly and most people would would say right you save the extinguish for the grind game because extinguish is a better grind game card than contain over here so you don't set this so if you feel like you're going to get even lead you don't set the uh extinguish you set the reinforce or if you feel like you're going to get board broken if you don't have access to any sort of solemn or anything like that this is what you go for terror hurts combo is still good when it resolves it's still great. It's kind of tough sometimes because you kind of want to play Solemn, but like Terra Hurts is two negates in one, and unless they open broken, right? Like completely broken, meaning like they open a way to be cross out and they open a way to be Terra Hurts, like both of Terra Hurts' interruptions, it's unlikely that they'll that they'll be able to like break this and break the back row in the same turn. But it's it's possible, it's just very unlikely. Most people do not commit that hard to playing board breakers. They usually play like six at most. Not to say it won't get broken, but it doesn't happen all the time. DD Crow's a pretty good card at the moment, just because it, it just uh punishes a lot of decks. Fire King and Labyrinth. Like, it's kind of low impact against Labyrinth, but it could also be really effective for stopping their grind game. So, if it's mixed with other hand traps, it could be good, but it's not like the be all end all, right? Like, Rescuous, I feel, needs every bit of help against Labyrinth possible. Maybe cutting Droplet for something else that beats uh, Labyrinth on, or for another card that beats Labyrinth on top of Crow maybe the right call time will tell time and more testing will tell so i'll give you guys some replays i guess we'll just look at like all of them so here we have this branded player playing a luber and i didn't want to ask a branded opening because i'm like well if he has the um brand effusion i get punished and he did have the brand effusion uh, he went for the Deer Servant, and uh, he also got into the Dogmatic and Maximus, right? And this is this is kind of what I mean when, you know, I say opening multiple hand traps is, like, very, very important sometimes. Because, like, in a way, this is almost better than Board Breakers. We, we've kind of stopped his engine completely for the turn, and he can't do much other than just sit on multiple defense switch of monsters that can't do anything. And the sad thing is, is that we draw our cross outs, right? So um, this is when I was playing uh, 43, right? I, 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 I've I cut the deck down to 40, but when I first went online out, I just shoved three cross outs in and then said, okay, let me go online with 43. But then I realized, wait a minute, this isn't sinful. This is a little too inconsistent for my taste. So what, what I did here is I cross outed my own impulse just so I could emergency preventer into it and then pass turn. This wasn't actually a bad idea because his engine is very fragile right now. He doesn't have access to the main card, which is Brand Effusion. I know he wants it, but he doesn't have access to it. Maximus is still alive, but that that's really not a big deal in a deck like Branded. Maybe if this was like a ritual deck, I'd be more scared of Maximus, but in a deck like Branded, it's, it's whatever. And so what ends up happening is I, I'm able to climb up into the fire engine, but fire engine just gets immediately punished by the imperm. And it turns out that like, if I just would have set this cross out, I actually could have gotten the game because as you'll see, as the turn goes on, right? Like he didn't really have much. Like if this is all I had to deal with, like, okay. So fire engine would have summoned out airlifter, airlifter, airlifter would have some searched out rescue. This is not game on board. Assuming that he only gets to clear one monster, this is not game on board, right? Uh, maybe at most I'm taking, right, because Airlifter has a uh, 1700 defense, 25, 36, that's uh, 63 plus 15. That's like, I have 200 light points left. I am on the bare minimum in terms of light points. And if I could have gotten that Airlifter on field, I could have searched Rescue, my turn, Rescue for the airlifter again emergency search hydrant hydrant search turbulence and then i already have the, the the names engraved and i haven't used any of the spells and traps yet so other than alert but that's not really a big deal be because i can still play from there so a little sad that we couldn't get that one but that kind of is what it is so this is game two same same person 
We're gonna prosperity for three. And I just wanted to prosperity here just to see if he had anything. And w whenever I prosperity early on, like these are sort of my targets. Like I don't know if I'm gonna make a terahertz, so I only banished a um, aggregator. I don't think I'll ever be dealing with a towers this game. So I banish underworld goddess and I banish Cerberus just cause it's the weakest link. I actually eventually take Cerberus out, replace it for like relinquished anima. I might even put in Hida to this list because Hida did me pretty well this past weekend. So yeah, we uh, link climb with Hydrant into Al Mirage Preventer. We're gonna go into the Sunlight Wolf combo. We're gonna summon back the Hydrant, but we're not gonna bounce back the Preventer because we wanna keep the two Rescue Aces in Grave. So we're gonna just bounce back the Amirage and then go go into Link Rebo to, to make Heat Soul. And then go into Turbulence to set four. And we couldn't Heat Soul draw because we resolved Prosperity earlier on in the turn, but that's, that's not a big deal, right? We have three hand traps, Impulse being able to get us more bodies, Heat Soul getting us more draws. And I don't want to Heat Soul before I like Impulse or before I like use the Emergency. I want to get the emergency and the impulse off before I go for heat soul so that I'm not drawing into engine. I'm drawing into potentially more non-engine. So you go straight into fetter duster. I immediately chain the uh, emergency uh, just to get out an extra body. And uh, I did, I didn't have a target for rescue. So there wasn't much I could do about that, but that's fine. We're able to bring back the Hydrant. We still have enough hand traps to where we can still play. Um, I stopped the Nightier Servant here because I felt like uh, this was just too much, right? Like, if you would have had Branded Fusion, he would have just activated it here. There's no reason why he wouldn't have. Nightier Servant would have locked him out of extra deck. So this, this kind of, like, if this resolves, this, you know, Branded Fusion doesn't exist. So this means he doesn't have the Branded Fusion. So now we get to airlifter into, I mean, Hydra into airlifter, get our HQ to get some sets. We're gonna heat soul pay. There's a lot of crazy shit going on here. We attempt to turbulence. We still haven't gotten all of our spells and traps out of deck yet. They're gonna chain Cartesia and we chain impulse to get out our fire engine. So before Cartesia can bring out a fusion monster. And they go into Guardian Chimera, and I was scared for a second, because I'm like, wait a minute, what, what is Guardian Chimera going to pop? And then I realized, it's not going to pop anything, because it, it was made with a Cartesia. It has to be Fusion Summoned with a spell card to get its effect, so... He essentially wasted his Guardian Chimera. And we were able to, like, Link Climb... ...for game, I believe. Now for game three. And he bricked! No! How did the 47 card branded deck brick? No way. What? How's that possible? That 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 that, that doesn't happen. So I start carefully considering how to play my turn. Um on my emergency, he super polyed me. And I was a little perplexed because I was like, wait a minute, why didn't you just wait for the uh, wait for the turbulence to super poly it? And then I would have had very little to work with because then turbulence, then you could have gotten rid of turbulence then you could have gotten rid of the whole set four. Now I still have set four. Like, sure, you have Mud Dragon, but I still have set four. And, I, and then he goes for Saunir. He, um... Cosmics, oh, this is hard to keep up with <laughs> at, at full speed. So he he cosmics the the the, the one set from hand, which is pretty smart, right? Because uh, it's not one of the sets from from uh, from deck, right? So that one set from hand is assumingly something important, but he whiffs it on a contain. And now what I did is I actually did extinguish before. So it was like the start of his turn. He didn't activate anything. So I was like, okay, let me extinguish target Sounir before he can call Dark with the Mud Dragon. Because he chose to pass priority over. Mud Dragon could not protect the Sounir. So now he's gonna 
activate Sonier and I'm going to activate Rescue. And he, he he's going to call by... He's going to call by the Hydra... Uh, or the Airlifter that I targeted, actually. And so I kind of did this backwards. Uh, so, like, I wanted to emergency then uh, activate the uh, alert. But I actually did it the other way around. So it's cool. I... I activated emergency to summon out impulse, tributed it, and then alert, add back the impulse to hand. Because I don't really care too much about the airlifter, I guess, at this point in time, because this is his turn, isn't it? Like. And then the, the rescue whiffs. And then he 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 has nothing else. There's there's no other interruption. So we're 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 good to keep going. Uh we're gonna emergency reset the extinguish. Swing for big damage. Make an IP. Turbulence set the last emergency or another emergency. And that's pretty much all for him. And that's the game. So dinosaurs! You guys like dinosaurs, right? You guys like when you open no hand traps against a dinosaur deck? Do you, do you know what no hand traps against a dinosaur deck means? Well, I'm going to show you what, what no hand traps against a dinosaur deck means, because clearly, clearly this is still allowed to exist. If you don't open a single hand trap, this is basically FTK. Basically. And then he's even using the horn source just to pour salt into the wound. Like, going into the Scrap Raptor combo, Scrap Golem, get the Scrap Chimera, cool, baby, get Raptor, Scrap Golem, revive another Raptor. Ib, Ib in dinos, and look, he's playing the world chalice shit. How many bricks is he playing? And he opened full combo with the Capitera. He opened full combo. This is cat, bro. Liz, and now Lagia, and then this fucking Transcendosaurus actually has a sick ass combo with um, Ultimate Conductor Tyranno, which I've never seen before, right? So Ultimate Conductor, right, can pop any monster from your hand or field, book and moon your opponent's entire board. And when he's destroyed, he can shuffle a normal monster back into grave, uh, from grave back into deck, and then summon it himself out. And when he summoned himself out, he can pop two cards, or he can pop a card you control, as long as he pops another card from hand. So he gets, like, the extra benefit. And this thing has 3,800. The fact that he just gets the Palmerization into this because of Capitera is, like, crazy. And the fact that he doesn't have to play, like, uh, Fusion Deployment or anything to get Capitara from deck is even crazier. So, obviously this is, this is, like, I don't want to say that it's unwinnable, but, like, there's one, that's three, that's four, that's five negates, Tyranno, SP Little Knight Banish, and a pop. Once he resolves the Tyranno. That's more than seven interruptions. That's 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 basically unable to play through unless I drew Dark Ruler, which I don't use Dark Ruler at the moment. You you could this could be a, an argument for Dark Ruler. It's just Dark Ruler doesn't beat Crimson Dragon, so you kind of have to weigh the the balance of well, I won't beat um, Calamity Turbo, which if Calamity ever gets banned, then you can you know sort of go for Dark Ruler, but uh, until Calamity gets banned. I think Droplet and more reactable cards are better, but you'll lose to stuff like this more often. Assuming you open no hand traps or no board breakers, which this is game one. I'm not playing board breakers anyway, so kind of kind of rough. Uh, I'm gonna just let this play out. Um, I book a moon, and he doesn't even fall for the impulse because the highest attack monster on his field is this stupid Transcendric. Like it's crazy. It's crazy. Fucking Mickey Mouse Clubhouse ass Lagia. What the hell? So that was Dino. Uh, second game I bricked. So <laughs> that's that's all well and dandy. Uh, I don't even know what duel this was. Oh, this guy impered me before he even resolved Hydrant. I was a little perplexed because I'm like, who do you think I am? Like, why are you? imperming a normal summon hydrant 
without even active like i haven't even activated the effect yet and you're imperming it do you not know anything about like um, emergency like i have four of the cards in hand like i in no world is that correct to like imperm a hydrant like maybe ash it but even then ash is like a waste if i have the emergency as well so we hydrant oh uh, we we get uh heat soul plus turbulence plus an imperm plus ash and he's playing eldritch so and i was like wait a minute this is an eldritch this is dogmatica So I'm kind of curious what happens with Dogmatica, because it doesn't seem like they get a lot. But they actually do. And Jesus, so much is going on. So first off, White Knight of Dogmatica, uh, when a card or effect is activated, it can mill one from their extra deck, so they could mill one from mine. And uh, I don't think they milled one from mine, actually. Hold on. Hold on. Let's check the log. Uh, so, oh no, he's, he's using this card, the uh, Continuous Spell. Uh, once per turn, uh, you're gonna use a look at either player's extra deck, send a monster from into the grave. Oh, okay, so he was looking at his, he was using the Dogmatica Matrix to mill his Entis um, and attempt to pop my rescue, and I don't think I had a target for rescue well, at, the, at the time of uh, activation for that, so. Yeah. Uh, so, again, he tries to Entis here pop his own thing. I don't really know what he was trying to do. Like, I was, like, I was, like, uh, because I have this call by, I'm like, oh, I can stop this Entis, but then I realized, like, wait, where's his target? I didn't see his target, then I looked. It's, it's, it's the Cursed Eldland. Like, why is he targeting his own cards? I'm like, okay, sure. So, uh, we can reset the Extinguish with Emergency, and because we could control Hydrum, we can activate the Extinguish immediately. Which is great. Uh, turbulence set three more. We go into uh, Nightmare Phoenix, and for some reason he didn't resolve Summon Limit on my second summon. You know you can do that, right? Like you can resolve second limit, seven, summon limit on the second summon, and it'll just stop me from summoning for the rest of the turn. I don't know, maybe if he was like not paying attention or something, but it seemed to be a misplay on his part. So here we go with another game. They impulse our airlifter, and we're just like, damn, that was a good ass fucking imperm. Um, we 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 witness a kaiju battle for some reason. I hydrant here. Uh, no, no interruption. So I just go straight into preventer into sunlight wolf. Boom boom. Get emergency. We get ashed on it, which is fine. Nightmare Phoenix for the back row. Um, and then they call... They call, uh... Hydrant on their call by when Turbulence was in our graveyard. I was like, holy shit, that was a misplay on my part. Because Turbulence is right there. So, if... If I had another Turbulence in my hand, I wouldn't be able to activate its effect. For some reason, he went for Hydrant. I, I just don't... I don't know. Uh... We're in bronze ring, so I'm not even gonna try to guess. Uh, prosperity, because we didn't draw a card, and we get an impulse. Uh, who do we banish? We banish a Terahertz package, because we're definitely not going going to that this turn. Uh, we're facing Generator. Generator, uh, Kaiju? I guess? Dude, how the fuck can anyone actually keep up with what's going on here? It's so hard to, like, commentate over this, uh, because everything goes so fast. Uh, I could probably change on the settings or something, but I'm 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 too lazy to look over all, all those things. Okay, so we emergency into preventer to summon back our airlifter, and the airlifter is gonna get us effect to dig for HQ. They're gonna get boss stage, which is fine, you know. Mardell gonna get negated, not a big deal. They're gonna attack into our uh, hydrant. We're gonna extinguish the kaiju. Which, um, you know, it's cool that Hydrant's negated during, like, the opponent's turn, because I really just don't care. If it, if Hydrant doesn't have an effect during their turn, I care if it has an effect during my turn, which 
it will. Because the uh, called by fucking wore, wore off. Um, and then they, they, they go into uh, Har here. And so basically I do the whole impulse bait where I activate impulse. They assume, you know, to make them not be able to activate this effect for us to turn. They tribute to negate. And we tribute to summon out our own body from deck. Um, and then I go into Underworld Goddess. And we get the game from there. So now game two, we, we, we've we sided for going second. They open Diviner, we just... <laughs> we just trivialized our whole turn by uh, veiling their Diviner, so I'm kind of sad. But uh, we're gonna Fetter Duster. We didn't open Engine! We didn't open Engine and they scooped. And this is some sort of Runic Generator build, like some Runic Kaiju Generator build. We didn't open Engine, they scooped off a single Fetter Duster, which I can't blame them because it's a pretty like, oh shit, they, they, they drew the fucking one of, no way. 43 cards and you drew the one of, no way. Yeah, I can't blame you. Uh, Labyrinth is still extremely hard for Rescue Ace to deal with, right? So we get to Hydrant, Airlifter, we get to HQ, Emergency, go into Turb, Turb's gonna set. Gonna alert. And it looks like we're all set to go for uh, terahertz here. But they drew the Nibiru. And we did not draw a cross out. And we get the HQ just for a shuffle back draw. Uh, we got the Ash, which is cool because at least we can stop the big welcome. But they have the called by. So they seriously opened. Like, think about this. They seriously opened. Called by Nib evenly. Called by Nib evenly. And there's nothing I could do now. You piece of shit. <laughs> God damn it. Fucking rogue like these nuts in your mouth, man. And then they, they they get both their boss ladies on board. They get to recycle the big welcome. Um Holy shit. Okay, so here's what happened. I go, I, I go normal summon hydrant. I know they have IDP because they said it last turn. And I'm like, I have to big brain this. So normal summon hydrant, nothing on normal summon, right? I'm gonna activate extinguish, pop lovely because lovely is going to be the most annoying card here. I know the other one's just a big welcome and I'm kind of hoping that they don't play multiple. Turns out I was wrong, right? Turns out that was the wrong call, but let's just say hypothetically they only played a single lovely Labyrinth. Chainlink 2, Lady Labyrinth to set one from deck. So they get to set another normal trap. Um, chain 3, they're like, okay, priority still, you, you're not gonna take the priority, so I'm gonna activate IDP. Target the Hydrant you already have in the Graveyard. Me, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm gonna activate Alert. Right, and that allows me to add a Rescue Ace from Graveyard or Deck to Hand because I control Hydrant. It actually doesn't, you actually don't even have to pick on activation. I thought you had to pick which one you were gonna take on activation, you actually don't. Um, that's only for Rescue because Rescue targets, but neither, but this card doesn't target. Neither does it make you say which one you're gonna do before you do it. You can do either one, regardless of if you control Hydrant, or you can do either one if you control Hydrant or not, but you don't actually have to, your opponent actually doesn't have to know before res. So, cool. Um, that's chain link number four, and then Arius is chain link number five because I responded, I believe, to a, res, uh, to a Labyrinth card or to a normal trap card, something like that, right? The response, it, Activation of a normal trap or labyrinth card. Yeah, labyrinth is fucking bullshit, man. I I swear it's it's impossible for rescuers to kind of deal with the amount of like it, with the way that uh, labyrinth m maneuvers its cards. It's really hard for rescuers to deal with that because they're not equipped to deal with cards like in graveyard. We're only equipped to deal with cards like on the field. Cards in graveyard are really hard for rescuers to like deal with. Um, so unless we can make something like a dweller, like. But even Dweller doesn't fix the whole problem because then they have the normal traps that they still get access to from deck. It's crazy. So, yeah. 
Um, so basically what ends up happening is they get Arius, IDP whiffs because the Hydrant gets added back to my hand and then they get to set another trap card from that. And their lovely gets popped. They big welcome for another lovely. J just to like shit, just to throw it in my face. They're like, what are you, a fucking moron? It's not like I could have popped the damn fucking silver lady. All right, I had to pop the lovely so that I'm not getting randomly destroyed non-targeting destruction of field or hand which is nonsense and yeah i i, I just skip from there because uh there's no way that i'm getting this hydrant to actually resolve because they're just gonna they're, they're just gonna be able to activate the fucking shit so now i played a lot of runic at the regional this past weekend. I don't know what it is about Runic this format. Everyone just has Runic in their deck. Which, I'm like, okay, cool, but why did I have to face three Runic decks back to back at the Catskill Regional? Like, come on. <laughs> have an original thought, please. Alright, so we end up going into Terror Hurts here. And... So... We, we actually big brain this uh, Hugin, so they activate Runic Destruction to summon one from extra deck, and what we do is we resolve uh, Terror Hurts. We don't use the one in, in that's already in Graveyard, we don't use the Desave Worm in Graveyard to negate the spell. Instead, we preemptively Myriologic Aggregator. Now, because it's their turn, they have turn priority, their cards have to be Chainlink 1, their triggers have to be Chainlink 1, their triggers have to be first. Our triggers will be Chainlink 2 and onwards, so it's the opponent's triggers, then it's my triggers, right? So, Aggregator is a trigger. So it's going to be Chainlink 2. And it's it was uh, sent in the same Chainlink that Hugin was summoned in. So now in this new Chainlink, it gets to activate in the same Chainlink that Hugin activates in. Cool. So, Aggregator gets to negate the Hugin. Sort of like in a sort of big brain kind of way because it's it's a trigger effect negate it doesn't happen as soon as it, it hits grave right it has to be the chain link after it hits grave so to set that up kind of takes some like telegraphing or to like you know you kind of just got to know how that works but yeah you you can do stuff like that that's a free negate without using any back row without using my d save worm that like that's like the best case scenario for like aggregator the second best case scenario is like a field spell or something but yeah, they just immediately scoop from there because I assumed they were going to make a Typhon, but then they realized like Typhon probably doesn't do shit to the trap cards. Um, because I could have left them in a constant, um, I could have constantly activated like fast effects back to back. So activate rescue or activate emergency, just get a rescue on field and then either extinguish or, or contain the... Uh, Typhon once it's done So here we are we get airlifter airlifter is a one card route uh, They ash plus the must we have the called by for it uh, We get the hydrant to go into the turbulence Turbulence gets us our set four. We alert into Impulse because we already have Preventer. We go into Terahertz line. We get G Golem, G Golem summon back Binary. Link Rebo, Tribute, Link 5, Dark Fluid. And yeah, so we're ending on Dark Fluid plus, uh, plus three back row plus Impulse. So they go for Fenrir, and I Valor the Fenrir just so they have less... Uh, ability to actually like use the Fenrir like if I were to mill the um, aggregator right um, that Fenrir would still trigger now aggregator would beat Fenrir but that's still kind of risky because if they had let's say something like a enemy controller they could chain it so that Fenrir leaves the field and no aggregator is worthless against it at least by not triggering or by using effect filler preemptively, I stop that from happening, right? But this is game one, so 
I believe. Yeah, the, the, this is a game one scenario, so I don't believe they should be playing enemy controller, but you know, who knows? I've seen people play weirder shit. So, um, we, they end up going for fountain here and that's when I'm like, okay, I have to negate that fountain. And then they go for a goddamn line walker. I'm like runic earthbound. What? Uh, yeah, they, they, they hard make Baron. And I'm like, yeah, they had to hard make Baron because there's no fusion you can make off of Line Walker plus Fenrir. Trust me, I've I've looked into it. I If there was a fusion, I, I would be playing it <laughs> in your Sarktix, but there's no fusion that can be made using specifically Line Walker and Fenrir. So it's not a good setup with Harmonic Synchro Fusion. There's better cards you could be playing. And then the Baron kind of just got, uh, like, completely annihilated by, by by the trap cards. I thought Baron was going to attempt pop terahertz frame one, but it did not. Uh, so I just double trapped it. I did the pop chain, chain's effect, then I did the, the, the contain to negate its effect so that it got popped, and boom. That's a scoop game from there. So I believe this is a game two of the same deck, right? They're they're on the earthbound stuff. So they go Hugin, we get impulse into fire attacker. So we sided in the fire attacker, and we draw and we drew into airlifter, dropped our contain because we won't need this in 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 a hand right and we can get it we can reset it off the emergency once emergency hits the graveyard so they go for fountain they go for stone sweeper search uh groundkeeper groundkeeper's gonna summon itself in a line walker and i'm like wait a minute this is saucy there probably is a fusion that can be made using as a matter of fact try to plant dragon sepalia could, could, could be made using these two and uh they just runic slumber me right for three they banished my out which is really disrespectful they banished uh one of my three preventers and my only effect veiler which isn't a big deal because i don't see a lot of people on effect veiler right now um and then they set two pass and i'm like wait a minute you're not going to harmonic synchro fusion for like a dragon sepalia or something you're just gonna leave these guys on field i don't know kind of sus so, uh, they have the Ash for our, uh, emergency. I chain cross out, call Ash. Now, this is kind of a goofy move when you have Ash in your hand, but sometimes it's just too important for things to resolve for, like, you, for you to worry about that. So, uh, I go into Hydrant. He has a summon limit. And I just look at my hand and I'm like, you know what? Okay. You want to play like that? You want to play Summon Limit, Mr. Earthbound Runic player? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to reset my contain. I'm going to HQ, shuffle back, draw. Oh, no, never mind. Never mind on the HQ. <laughs> I'm going to swing into your Groundkeeper. And I didn't realize that Groundkeeper also said by battle, right? So Earthbound monster you can draw cannot be sure of battle or card effects. Like, well, there's a card in Field Zone. So that also means Fountain, uh, which is crazy. So he, so Groundkeeper here protects both himself and the Line Walker from from battle, as long as uh, Runic Fountains on the field. There's actually some crazy plays you can do with that with uh, some other decks that we'll probably get into in the future. But yeah, so I set my two imperms and I pass turn uh, with one imperm planted firmly against the summon limit, so that come my next turn, if this imperm's still here. I can break the summon limit and then go into my own place. So boom. So they start with runic tip. Um, I am good conscious. Cannot let that. <laughs> I cannot let that go through. So uh, we're gonna ash. They get a draw one, and they go for groundkeeper. I am from that, and they have no play for s somehow. No sp. No nothing. They have no play here. I which perplexes me. Maybe because of the summon limit, but I'm not too sure. Uh, 
So we go for Imperm on the Hugin to stop the Summon Limit, and I'm pretty sure that stops it from being able to protect cards. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it does. So they go Runic Slumber after I search my Turbulence, which I think is fine because I can prevent her, summon back the uh, Turbulence, which I banished Airlifter instead, but it, it actually ended up working out because Airlifter can just grab Alert. Because uh, it turns out this idiot banished my Rescue as well. I, I was going to go for Rescue, but then I, didn't, I forgot. Oh yeah, some of my cards are banished. So we go for the alert here. Alert, add back the turbulence, and because I didn't summon it properly yet, turbulence is going to set two more. Uh, we attack for big damage. Leaving the summon limit on their field, and there's not much they can do. So now, this is just a completely shitty hand, but I keep going up against Runic, so I might as well show it. Uh, Runic for hire. This is just like Dinosaur. Uh, good luck predicting when to hand trap someone because, uh, I guess, like, Rex is probably not the right card to, uh, to Ash Blossom. Maybe Rookie's the right card to Ash Blossom. Because if he didn't get that Rookie, I don't think he could have gotten this whole combo, but it's crazy that he had both, right? Like, it's, it's just insane. Because I don't think he's drawn three cards off of uh, Fountain yet. Yeah, okay, like, I think at that point he did, but... Yeah, so, then we Fossil Dig for another one. IP. Summon back Donner. Go into Fulgo. And then we make Gigantic Sprite. It's so random. It goes for Sprite Blue. Sprite Blue searches Sprite Red. And they go SP, and it's like, oh, man. Well, I didn't draw engine anyway. <laughs> I, I, I didn't even draw engine anyway. So, I don't even care. So, going into our next game, we get Hydrant plus Lifter, which is great. They try to Imperm, and we're just too good. We're, we're just too good at the game. This is, this is how Yu-Gi-Oh! is played. We have the emergency. We open emergency plus airlifter because we're just too good at the game. Who cares, you know, that airlifter usually searches emergency and that in theory it would be better if if it searched emergency every time, but who cares? We open the emergency, we're just too good at the game. Same dude, right? Okay, he's also on rescue ace. And uh, we drew the funny card. We did, um, we did end up drawing the funny card. Uh, so they have a little thing of their own. And for some reason, they tributed their own hydrant <laughs> instead of their airlifter. So they just scooped. They just... Uh, I I don't know. Maybe, maybe this guy's new to Rescue Ace, right? This is still bronze rank, right? So maybe he's just getting a hold of the combos. But you go Omega has a solo mode, even though it's not hard to... Even though it's kind of like difficult to... Um find in the UI because I just hate Yugo Omega's like UI is like nothing straightforward like everything's fucking everything's like small ass symbols and shit like you gotta like know what they mean beforehand but yeah uh that was rescue Ace on a budget um so let me know what you guys think uh next time I'm probably gonna try playing the deck um like live so you guys will actually get to see my decisions and stuff as I play the game. I don't mind doing it like this, but I just think it would be a lot uh, better uh, for explaining things and you guys being able to see what's actually going on. I didn't realize the replays would be like fucking sonic speed. So um, let me know if you, if you guys want to see more and uh, I will definitely oblige. This has been your boy Nisho here, signing out. <laughs>